liberty means anything, it is the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. We're joining you at a time when freedom, freedom of expression really is a treasured fundamental right here in Sri Lanka and people have seen the results of being able to say what they think, what they feel. And this was personified in the Aragalea uh, that swept across Sri Lanka causing a change in the government, in the political structure here in Sri Lanka the likes of which has never before been seen in our beloved nation. And to discuss the freedom of expression here in our country and, and how far uh, really has the current pieces of legislation that have been passed in Parliament and that, that are currently pending uh, would uh, affect the freedom of expression here in Sri Lanka. We've got with us an expert panel, of course, as we always do. Uh, starting first, we've got uh, Dr. Ajanta Pereira. She's an activist and also a former presidential candidate. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ajanta Pereira, for joining us on our program this evening. Uh, we've also got with us Professor Rajiva Vijay Singha, a former state minister. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on our program today. Uh, we've also got with us uh, Ambiga Satgunanathan. Uh, she is a member on the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Torture Victims and a former commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Ambiga, for joining us on our program today. And uh, we've also got with us, uh, no stranger to the show, President's Counsel Yuar De Silva. He's an advisor to the Ministry of Justice, the chairman of the Bureau of Rehabilitation, and also the former president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, President's Counsel Yuar De Silva, for uh, obliging and accepting our invite, as you always do. Uh, your presence here is, of course, much valued. Um, well, getting right into the discussion, uh, starting off with uh, Dr. Ajanta Pereira. Now, uh, Dr. Ajanta, you are a person, of course, who users use your freedom of expression to the utmost mm. we've um, seen you out on the street protesting uh, fighting for the rights of the general public um, and uh, by the looks of it for the most amount of time i think you've remained peaceful in your protest uh, unless of course uh, there might be other parties that think otherwise but dr ajanta before we get into the substance of the matter recently um, you faced uh, a serious incident, of course, uh, while you were protesting. Uh, now, we had a time when people used to come and flock at golf face, you know, stay there overnight for months on end, and their freedom of expression was protected, uh, much to the credit of the government at the time. But what do you feel now, post Aragalea, post this reawakening of the general public? Do you feel safe to protest? And, and could you give us a little bit of insight on what happened that day? Yeah, thank you for inviting me, first of all. Um, it's great to be here. I just want to say a little bit about the incidents itself, and I think that will, that will help us to understand the situation at the moment. Uh, basically, the, we have, a, a, on every Thursday, we have a, a silent protest at uh, Liberty Plaza, uh, you know, uh, near the Liberty Plaza, mm -hmm. roundabout. <clears throat> so on that day itself, I mean, after a while only I went <coughs> to that protest. Basically, we talk about the issues in the country at the moment, escalating prices, you know, difficulties for living. Mm. And uh, when I went there, uh, there, were, there were a number of policemen there. Mm. So I just went and greeted them, said hello to them, and I said, you know, okay, I'm go we are going to start the little campaign. Mm. So I went to the other side, and I was holding a, a placard. While I was holding the placard, I saw from this side, there was a group of people who suddenly appeared. Mm. It's as if though they were brought by in a vehicle and they all got off. And there were about 30 people. Mm. So we thought that that looks a little strange. It looks like another protest by itself happening on the other side. Mm. And, uh, and then they were waiting to cross the road. At the same time, I looked this way, where the police were, and to my surprise, the greatest surprise was the policemen were walking away from that side, and they were going towards the Arliya Gahamandira, mm. towards their station. So I was a little puzzled. There's a huge number of people trying to come to our side, across the road, and then the police were walking away. And then after a little while, they came, and I was not sure as to what was happening. They came behind us, and suddenly, 
you know, they, they walked to us and they started to tell us, there's no issue in the country. Everything is fine. We have money, no petrol queues, you know, no diesel queues. So why are you protesting when everything is okay? So we looked, I basically, there was a man wearing a red mask, mm. a red t-shirt, and he came very close to me. And, uh, you know, he, he was kind of, I, I saw that he was becoming aggressive. Mm. So I said to him, uh, I called him Mali. I said, Mali, if you find that everything is okay with you, well, you know, you just go on hmm. and we will protest hmm. because we believe that there is there are things to be changed. So that's why we are protesting. Hmm. And then all of a sudden the others also came along and started shouting, you know, remove everything. I mean, remove the national flag. You have no right to hold the national flag here, you know. And they were coming very close to us. And as women, there was another lady, Fatima, and they were coming very close to us, I mean, touching us and saying, you know, trying to push us. Hmm. So we were a little surprised as to what's going on. I mean, we, we, were, we didn't expect that. And then they started to remove the national flag. They started to remove the posters. And all of a sudden, it became very frightening because they were coming very close and they were showing their aggressiveness. Hmm. And one thing I noticed was they looked like they were under the influence of drugs because they did not know what they were doing. They couldn't even walk properly. Hmm. You know, they were moving here and there. And it was a very frightening incident for us. Hmm. And then they removed, they very quickly, you know, they were trying to tear apart all the posters. And then by that time we realized we can't be standing here because hmm. they were very coming close to us and they were trying to touch us. Hmm. While they are talking, I mean, when the way they talked to us was they would come very close to us. I mean, their faces would be like this and they are trying to show their aggressiveness. So what we did very was... Quickly, what were the, the, you said there were a number of police officers there. What were they doing throughout all this? They, they left. There, there, were n there was no police, not even the traffic police. Mm. So what we did was we gathered the posters, actually Fatima gathered the posters and we walked to the aisle where the, normally the policemen are. Mm. So we felt if we go there, people can see us better. Mm -hmm. So we were standing This was in there. the middle of the road? Hmm? This was in the middle of the road? Where the pavement. Yes, yeah. on the island. So then what happened basically was they also came there mm. and they started to push us a little bit. Mm. You know, they, I mean, they, we kept on saying, don't touch us, don't touch us. But they kept on trying to touch us and just mm. to put fear in us. Mm. So I told Fatima, look, if we stand here, they're going to become very aggressive mm. and we won't be able to control them because <coughs> it's only us. Mm. Let's sit down. Mm. When we sit down, we would feel a little safer because, you know, everybody would see if they're trying to lift us up. So we sat down. Mm. When we sat down, about 40 people just surrounded us mm. and uh, and some of the people were you know uh, lying on the ground pretend i mean like as though they were sleeping and they were literally touching our legs so we said don't come anywhere near and we said, i mean the only way i could defend myself was i you know i i mean basically screamed mm. don't come near us don't touch us mm. and kept on screaming and i the word that I, I, I could think of was Sri <laughs> I couldn't say any other word. So I kept on shouting like that, you know, Sri Dushane, Sri Dushane. And I really want to say thank you to the media that was there. I saw the Sirisa media was there, you know, and he was there literally holding the camera on us. And the YouTube channels were holding their cameras on us. And I think that protected us to a large, large extent. Hmm. And this went on for about half an hour. Mm. And they were all the time coming very close to us. Mm. You know, and this was the fearing part of it. I mean, they were tormenting us. They wanted to somehow get us to go. And uh, this was going on for about half an hour. Mm. And then all of a sudden, a police jeep appeared. And uh, the good looking OIC of Kolpiti police got off with his sunglasses. And just like a hero in the Hindi movies or the Tamil movies, and he got off and he walked to us and I was thinking, you know, wow, you know, good timing that he's coming now. And I wanted to tell him what happened. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to listen. I tried so hard to talk to him and say what happened. He didn't want to listen. 
he walked straight to the people, the thugs, and he tapped on their shoulder and said, Gidrayand. I mean, this was so bad because he didn't want to know what was happening. He just wanted to get rid of the evidence. He didn't want us to know their names. He didn't ask them where they come from. It's as if though he knew who they were. The show is over. Hero has appeared, saved the innocent women. And then he comes and says, you know, everything is over. Dr. Ajanta, well, of course, there are there, there is video footage of what happened there. Exactly. Uh, just like you said, uh, there were uh, media stations uh, from all major media companies in the country covering this incident. Then, in addition, of course, um, social media activists also were present at the point. Uh, but, however, uh, due, to the, due to the current situation in the country and, and, and the fact that uh, now with new pieces of legislation coming, uh, dictating uh, what is true and what is false, I, I must remind all the panelists that uh, uh, they need to take responsibility for the statements that you make on our program uh, as to the truth and authenticity of those statements uh, will of course uh, come under the scrutiny of the government very soon uh, once the online safety bill is passed. Thank you very much uh, Dr. Ajanta for that opening statement. We will get into uh, the details of that as we progress. Uh, Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh, um, you two were quite a vocal activist. Um, you took a, a slight time off uh, well, now you're back. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, what do you really think about what's happening in Sri Lanka in this very crucial election year? And this year is unlike any election year that has come before. Elections have been postponed so much and people are waiting. People are eager to vote at an election and appoint their leaders. And what better time to do that than a time when a country is in crisis? But do you think there will be enough information to go around for the general public to make an informed decision on who to vote this time around? Your time starts now. I don't think there's any doubt that everyone knows that the right thing to do is to vote the present government out. I don't think anyone has any doubt about that except the few people who think, as Ajanta was told, no, no, everything is okay because there are no petrol queues. Hmm. You know, I was horrified to find leading economists sort of saying, you know, maybe we shouldn't have elections. Then they apologized and said, no, 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 we didn't mean that. You know, Indrajit Kumar Swami, Nimal Sandaratna said, we're doing very well. Nimal has now started saying, no, we're not doing very well. The government is not doing anything the IMF told it to. The corruption continues. Money is not being cut. So even this elite, which was, uh, you know, being very jolly about how things are better than they, are, than they were, are now beginning to realize that things are just getting worse and worse and worse. But I don't know why anyone is surprised. You know, because this has been the history of Mr. Vikram Singha and his role model, Jaya Jaya Wartna. Repression, repression, repression. You know, people have forgotten 1983. And you see, there's a big difference between what I would call the shortcomings, the corruption of other politicians, mm. and the ruthlessness that Jaya Jayavna set, set up. And I don't know why people have forgotten this. You know, we talk of elections being postponed. I didn't hear the activists protesting when Karu Jayasurya perverted the bill. You remember about five years ago? Provincial Council. How they stopped the elections by smuggling in different amendments. There was no protest. I think the Human Rights Commission didn't object at the time. There was absolutely nothing because, you know, everyone tends to rally around their chosen person. And in Sri Lanka, it's unfortunately the person who is the opponent of the person they hate. Hmm. And of course, what none of these people realized when they were running after Anil Vikram Singh was that he would jump onto the Rajapaksa side long before any of them would. And he would actually give professionalism to repression in a way that Gotabe never did. You know, I still remember, I kept saying, why are people insisting that Gotabe must go if they don't know what is going to follow? I used to tell my good friend, Dan Jatilaka, who, who by that stage couldn't stand Gotabe, you know, why are you asking for him to go? Do you know what's going to follow? And look what they've got. And there's a wonderful cartoon the other day showing a, a face made up of Ranil and Mahindra Rajapaksa, the same, the features, the worst features of both. And what you have now 
<coughs> is a situation where the repression that we had again and again and again in 1983, in 1987, is being repeated. You know, the thugs you mentioned, who have people forgotten Kalulaki? You remember when the Supreme Court judges were jeered at? Hmm. And he said, I'm an ordinary citizen, and then it turned out that Ranil had signed at his wedding two weeks before. You know, he was a card carrying UNP member, as doubtless your thugs, who well, I won't say UNP members, but they were part of this whole establishment. Hmm. And that has now been grafted onto massive amounts of funding that keep the elite going. But the hope, I suppose, is that, you know, your, your thug said everything is okay. I mean, you and I know how people are suffering because of economic deprivation now. Mm. You know, the people who have cars have, the, have, have uh, diesel and petrol. But as Nima Sandra said the other day, nothing has been done to cut the perks the number of vehicles that go around with all the ministers, mm. how much do they cost? I still don't buy, I mean, I don't understand, but when I became a minister, I was told I had 14 vehicles. I said, get rid of all of them. And Kabir Hashim promptly came and took them. Because, of course, as Chandrika said, I'm going to put someone on top of you because you won't tell me, uh, you won't do what I told you to. So they appointed Kabir Hashim. And Kabir Hashim's sole purpose in life was to get all the vehicles. So his relations turned up and took all the vehicles. I mean, that's a fact, and I stand up for that. So this is what's happening. And, uh, you know, there was no concern about being critical of these people, because they were the chosen government, they've got rid of the Rajapaksas. No one believed that the minute you abandon all principles, mm. you're going to have this wonderful coalition. And as you said, it's only up to the people to exercise their votes, but there'll be desperate attempts to postpone voting. Don't forget, the UNP is past master at postponing voting. The referendum. It is too. Th then, of course, you had Karu Jais, who was, you know, Karu is now dancing around pretending he's a Democrat. You know, he was the worst speaker that we've ever had. Because he, maybe Mahindra Yapa is trying to, you know, do better than him. <coughs> but he just allowed those perversions of bills just as it now happening. Well, Professor Rajiva, we will get into the details, of course. Uh, many names were mentioned, many <laughs> individuals uh, were referred to. They, they, they don't have, of course, representation here. They're not here. They're not here to defend themselves. Uh, but, of course, as I said before, uh, each speaker needs to take responsibility for the statements that they make on this program. Um, let's move on to the opening statement of Ambiga Sadhguranathan, uh, former commissioner of the Human Rights Commission. Um, well, as the... Uh, you know, as a member of the Human Rights Commission, of course, you fought for the uh, rights of the general public. Uh, where do you think uh, fundamental rights or the access to fundamental rights stand right now as it is in Sri Lanka? Well, um, I think, uh, as Professor Vijay Singh has said, some might disagree that we actually fought for people's rights when we were at the, on the commission, but, you know, be that as it may, uh, I would say that in Sri Lanka, if you look at the history of Sri Lanka, no government has had a monopoly on repression mm. right i mean the unp clearly it was 83 there was 87 the jvp etc then of course we had the rajapaksas where we had wholesale repression mm. there was a climate of fear particularly in the north and the east civil society couldn't function military intelligence would turn up etc etc NGOs were hounded you know a CID turns up and freedom of expression in particular was definitely people were afraid to speak up mm. there were instances where even you know uh, you had a lecture about a concept a conceptual issue mm. and what happens is that you are thought to be or you're portrayed as someone who is threatening national security now that national security has been used even if you look at the laws now that they the atb mm. uh, the osb national security is a blanket term that has been used by every single government no one can say they have not to crack down on dissent and curtail freedom of expression so i would say you know if you look historically even during yahapalana there were certain things that did improve because we did have for instance right to information and that is something that the public as we have seen particularly in the last few years the public have used that
to expose corruption, mm. to hold uh, you know public officials to account. So there were certain good things that did happen. Mm. But of course, even during that time, uh, for instance, the military security apparatus that did not change the way they behaved in the north and the east the way they surveilled the mothers of the disappeared that did not change because it was really entrenched during the rajapaksa regime and yahapalan really didn't do anything to dismantle that hmm. and we have you know i i have personal experience as a commission member going to a village in northwestern province where the navy who had a camp just uh, next door to the village they turned up asking me why i was there what authority did he have to do that? Well, we, wrote, we wrote to the uh, Navy commander, <coughs> right? So my point is that we cannot praise any particular regime here because all of them have been quite awful. It is all relative as to which has been, you know, the least worst option. <coughs> and um, uh, therefore, I would say right now, the, the, what the current government is doing is through passing these laws, mm. they are trying to crack down on dissent and they, instead of the white vans, what we have now is amendment, I mean, uh, bill <coughs> after bill that we cannot even keep up, mm. right? Whether to challenge it, to analyze it, we cannot keep up. Now they're going to amend, I think, the penal code. Yeah. They're going to amend that. We had the microfinance bill. They're bringing the NGO bill. There is the Commission on uh, Unit Trust, Unity and Reconciliation. So it is through law. They're weaponizing the law rather than using brute force. Yeah. Brute force is what we saw during the Rajapaksa era. Now you have weaponization of law, but once again to curtail civil society, to curtail freedom of expression, and public officials, for instance, are not performing their duty, like the police in your case, uh, and uh, even public officials are not being held to account, the immunoglobin um, scandal. Hmm. So I would say fundamental rights are still under threat. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambika Sadhguranathan. Since you brought up the immunoglobulin scandal, uh, there was a <coughs> protest that was held uh, right in front of the CID, and, um, fi and those protesters were just demanding uh, for the minister, the then Minister of Health, to be held accountable uh, for the immunoglobulin scam and for action to be taken. However, uh, these protesters were arrested and um, we haven't still got an update on, on whether or not they've been granted bail. However, uh, moving on to uh, President's Council, you are De Silva. Now, uh, Mr. De Silva, you are an advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Um, you are the chairman of the Bureau of Rehabilitation. Of course, you have your arms in the government as well. So, um, what would be, much was spoken of freedom of expression in Sri Lanka and how, uh, well, if I gathered correctly, how bad it is right now. Uh, what would be your response? As to is this really what is happening in Sri Lanka? Uh, now, all my colleagues, they said uh, what is happening in presently, mm -hmm. but we, that is a fact. So are we going to criticize this and then see another people come, they, they will do the same? If, what is the purpose of that? So my point is that we know that they are not, the politicians are not doing this to the betterment of country. Okay, okay. So then, what are we going to do? The Aragale is not the issue, thing that because they don't have a leader. Hmm. They just came and then they try to sabotage. And then what they do, did, we saw. Hmm. They can't go and burn uh, government property and they can't enter by force. So we have to talk about that also. The people who started it in a better way and they want to show their protest as. Uh, she Dr. told me, doctor uh, told us, the she who did it in a better way and mm -hmm. she protested in a way that people <coughs> will accept. That is called freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains, now when they, are, when they were doing that, another set of people, they also come and say, this is what we think freedom of speech. Mm. So they say we 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 have the we have the liberty to protest and say you are not doing wrong thing. Mm. That is not correct. That is not correct because they are purposely, as she quite correctly pointed out, you do it in a separate way. Mm. You do it that you have the liberty, mm. but you can't come and threaten us or do harmful act for our. Uh, progress. Hmm. So that is how it is happening. Hmm. People talking about freedom of expression, but they are not concerned about section may, Article 15. Hmm. They are talking about only 14, but hmm. they are forgetting Article 15. The classic example is that 
Dr. Ajanta was doing in a proper way, that is the uh, Article 14, mm -hmm. the others have come and threatened and done wrong thing. So what <coughs> is the police thing? So police are not doing that. Hmm. So they are not allowing us to do our freedom of speech in a proper way. Hmm. So in, now what the, the people now, Sajab, they were, they were rallied down and they were marching. But what is the purpose of going to Arliya Gahamandir or any other uh, 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 government institution and they are, what are they going to do there? So that's what I'm telling you. you. You have to accept the fact that there are limitations. So if we are not going to do it in a proper way, if we are not going to understand our limits, then we are talking nonsense because we are talking about freedom of speech unnecessarily. But people, you said that we, we want election. People say that they want election. Mm. For what purpose? So now Rajiv said that, mm. so what are we going to do without mm. amending the constitution, without amending the person parliament election system? Are we going to change the government? No, these same people, they, they will get into various groups and they will come again to the parliament because we will go and vote for the same people. Nobody has come forward and given us a proper way of doing things to the country. How the, they are going to develop the economy? What is, the, uh, uh, what is their attitude about the fundamental rights? And what are the things that they are, they are going to do for the, uh, our, uh, uh, this, um, a tourism industry. But, but Mr. Silva, I think some of, one of the main criticisms was, of course, these, uh, as, as Ambiga pointed out, were, are these uh, bills that are being brought over Public, and right. over again. Yes, and yes. I, I believe the fear around these new pieces of legislation and why the people are so skeptic about it is because of how the existing laws are currently being misused. Now, take for example um, a social media person who runs a YouTube page called Piap. He was arrested for posting a, a, a clip of a call that was held with the uh, Minister of uh, Public Security. Yeah. And he was arrested under section 120 of inciting dissatisfaction against the government. Dis disaffection. Disaffection. Dis disaffection against the government. Yes. And of course, I, I think, I mean, I listened to the clip. There was no disaffection. There was absolutely nothing. So when state institutions or, or authorities that can enforce the law are misusing these laws that are meant for other purposes when you bring in new laws like the online safety bill that you know gives powers to this commission that has been appointed by the president to decide on what is true and false that's why the people are skeptic about no, it. I don't think you what is your point is correct because it, now at the moment mm -hmm. they are doing in not in a proper way no so there is no <laughs> online bill there is no online bill, yet they arrested this person. So you're, what, what Angbiga is saying is correct, they are weaponizing the law. Is that what no, the government no, no, is doing? That. You are not correctly using that. Okay. Because any law, you can use it in a better way or in a different way to harass people. So, Mr. De Silva, just let, let me get this right now. What, what you're saying is, now, let's take, for example, the situation of Piat. Yes. He posted a, a video that yes. is completely harmless, but was arrested under Section 120. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. So you're saying now that the OSB is there, the government can, this commission appointed by the president, can say, oh my gosh, no, that's a false statement that is, that is hurting yes, the feelings of... You say like no, that... I'm just saying, you, no, no, is you this what you're saying? That. No, 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 that is not correct. If, if you are, if the... Well, and are, arrest him the correct way, no, is that what you're Even saying? if it is not there, they will do it. Because they are, no, so, we, are not, we are not endorsing that. We are not ready to say that police have done the correct thing. I say it's totally wrong, but yet the, no, this bill was not there. So then even that also, even any law is there, the police will misuse it. That is a fact. Can I ask you a question? I think, I think we'll, 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 open the, we'll open the floor yes, for questions I, from our journalists I because to understand they are that eager to, to, to get, in on this, uh, get in on so, this action. Uh, this, 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 Nadeem, uh, Nadeem Majid, um, but can no I stranger to face nation, and yeah. Niresh Elia Thambi, yes. You see, what I feel, Mr. De Silva, is that at some point, people of integrity must resign. Don't you think that time has come for you now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel very That's strongly a, yeah. about it. Uh, you know, most of you have forgotten mm. 
But way back in 1980, I resigned from my government job when Mrs. Bandarnayaka's civic rights were taken away. And the whole elite mocked me and said, you don't know how bad the 70s were. Two years later, they came and told me, no, you were right. This was dictatorship. And 1980, I realized what was happening. I think people like you must stand up at this point. But, but, but I mean, Ms. Professor Vijay Singh, the problem with resignations is if you say that everyone, if you, if, you, if you are working, let's say, in an independent commission or as the chairman, head of the Bureau of Rehabilitation, or let's say you're in the police commission, because we've seen this happen before as well, right? During the Yahapalne regime, there were multiple independent commissions were set up to hold, to ensure checks and balances. There are instances where uh, Professor Siri Hetike, mm. police commission, resigned. Uh, multiple other commissions as well, but that's the one that comes to mind. I mean, if everyone's just going to resign, who's left to run this? No, no, it's, it's a critical mass. You see someone like him, who has a high reputation for integrity. If he resigns, it sets a trend. I'm not saying that people will follow immediately. But I think there are enough people now who have begun to realize that you have to make your protest. Professor Vijay Singh, you know, I used to think that way as well. We had first five MPs who made their asset declarations public, then it went up to 12, and it went no further. Because <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out if 12 is not critical mass for 225, or if 20 is not critical mass for 225, what is the critical mass for 1.5, one and a half million public servants? Is it a hundred thousand? It is not up to people to decide and say, my little gesture is not going to have any effect. It is up to everyone. No, what I'm saying is, is there something better that you can do to correct yes. these issues? That's, like, that's the thing from I'm doing. Within the I, I think it's wrong for us to speak about uh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, 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 different thing okay by merely because I resign that does not mean that uh, all things will happen in that way but I am there to criticize and try to uh, come ask the government to come to a certain uh, proper place otherwise by everywhere when I go there and if <coughs> I'm not satisfied with the way that they are going to, I will resign no that is, to some extent I will agree with you if they are not doing it in some way that I will I can't tolerate for further but at the moment, what I am doing is, they, they, are, they should bring uh, laws that is perfectly right. They, they should, mm. but they should allow the others to discuss this. Mm. The, 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 now they have been given the opportunity to come and uh, express their views. Mm. Uh, she was not asked to give her um, uh, expressions, yeah. her views. Mm. So that is what the lacking part. I so, also want to say something very, very strange that happened at the police station. No. When I went there and I wanted to make the complaint, I want it to be written. Mm. So when I walked into the police station with the other lady and, the, and Imran, when I walked in there, the policemen were all telling me to go and meet the OIC. So I said, why should I meet the OIC? I only mean, want to make a statement. I, I mean, mean, I, you do, said I want a my nice guy and yeah, 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 complaint right, com to, go complain there. to be written. Thought you were fond of him. That's right. You know, <laughs> and complaint to be written. Mm. So uh, then, then. At last, after a while, a person came and sat down and he said, okay. Then he asked me for my name. So I said my name. Then he asked for me for my address. And immediately he got cold. He was asked to come. So he left. And then he came back and he was trying to again start and again he was called. So he was like, he was disturbed several times. And then he at last came and sat down and said, I'm so sorry, you know, to take your uh, complaint, there should be a female poli police, mm -hmm. and uh, I cannot take it. Wow. So I can only take the the the, the complaint from a man, right? Uh. So they waited for females to turn up, and two female uh, police officers came, and uh, then you know they turned and looked at us and said, "Ah, are these the two? That's how they talk to us, and then." Very strangely, one of the police women said to me, we need to examine you. I said, examine what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, I have not made complaints that I have a headache or anything like that. <laughs> Even then, they can't examine you. They have to send you to a judicial medical officer. No, you know, I, I said, Dr. I said, Ajanta, no. Uh, you know, uh, this is an election year. Yeah. And especially we in the media, we know that as elections get closer, the level of violence Escalating. grows and, yes, it escalates. Uh, and uh, this seems to be... Uh, your incident seems to be the start of perhaps a, a new trend of escalation. Exactly. Uh, where you have thugs uh, uh, assaulting uh, people who are doing a silent protest mm. within a few meters of temple trees exactly. itself. And the police actually walked away. A few meters away. of the Kolibiti police uh, station. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> and, and it seems ironic that this happened at the Liberty Roundabout. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Liberty. Yes. Liberty. Yes, and I'm not talking about the cinema. <laughs> I'm talking about the word <laughs> Liberty. Liberty. Uh, what would you have to say about the level of violence and do you fear that it will increase? Well, yeah, because the thing is, I've never experienced this before. And then also it looks very odd how the police were behaving. You know, the police were behaving in an extremely strange way. Uh, we, the, the two police officers, the lady police officers, never came back. We were waiting for half an hour. They never came back again. So we had to include our <coughs> statement together with Mr. Imran's. So the next day we went to the so women's the, so the, bureau. So the male police officers took Imran's <coughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He took Imran's but not ours. And then... Uh, I, I think President's Council, you are De Silva, has quite an extensive yeah. criminal practice. Is, is this don't an anomaly? Wrong, don't say wrong thing. Because they, they should have... Then and they are recorded her statement. But there, but there is a provision that... That, no, you need, that is you need a lady officer to, to arrest. That is, that is yes. arresting. Yes. Only arresting. Searching. Like that, right. If they want, the complaint. male officer can't search. Mm. But they, they have to record the statement immediately if she is ready to give the statement. Otherwise, they have, if they have to find a lady police officer and then record by the time all things will yeah, be finished. And then we so. went to the Human Rights Commission. Because of that, we had to go to the Human Rights Commission because then we gave our statements to them. Hmm. Uh, and then we went to the Women's Bureau because we felt that because we were really treated and badly, we felt we need to go and make a complaint there. The moment I walked in there with Fatima again, uh, the lady said, we cannot take your complaint because you need to know the names of the thugs, their addresses, their telephone numbers, <coughs> how we could contact. <coughs> the I mean, bureau? it sounds like it sounds like if you are raped, you need to ask for his ID number, mm. you need to ask for his phone number and his name uh, before you can make a complaint about the rape case. I mean, is this Sri Lanka? Is that true? Mm. It, it is Sri Lanka. It's happening. Actually. It's I mean, happening. That's the thing. Because that's right. Uh, yeah. Amika, uh, I'm a little confused. I thought yeah. Parliament makes the law and not the call pity police. <laughs> Well, Parliament makes the law, everyone, everyone else disregards the law and they all break the law, particularly public officials. Now, what uh, Dr. Ajanta said is not new. This is something that we have Happening. seen. If you take, yeah. for instance, women victims of sexual and gender-based violence, when they go to the police, this is what they've been experiencing for decades. Particularly if it's family violence, the police try to mediate or they refuse to take the complaint. Sometimes they take the complaint of the woman, they take the woman's police, uh, sorry, uh, telephone number, then they call her at night and they harass her. So, and if a woman, let's say, takes a protection order mm -hmm. against uh, a husband, partner, and the person breaches the order, uh, turns up at her house, beats her up, they go and complain to the police. The police ask the woman, tell us where he is, so we can go arrest him. Sometimes the women actually find out and they go and tell the police and still nothing happens. And the woman, despite the protection order, is still insecure and frightened. So it is Sri Lanka. And it's been that way for a long time. Mr. De Silva, you initially in your opening statement, uh, you made this comment about uh, you know the online safety bill and, and, and Piat's arrest under section 122 of the penal code, how you know, despite what law is there or not there, if the government or if no, no, don't use the government if a, if a certain arm of government no, or if a certain arm, arm of the executive government. yes if a certain arm of the executive wants you arrested and yes. they have the power to do it say for example only for example say the police department if they want to arrest you 
they will arrest you somehow and there's nothing you can do about it. Is there no, no, nothing you can do about it is a different matter. But we have to think about that because fundamental right cases are there. Okay. So we see that a lot of fundamental right cases are there and the Supreme Court has quite clearly stated that the police have violated hmm. the fundamental right and they said that uh, you have to do whatever things that are necessary to the relevant police officers. So, but the Mr. government Deselva, is not doing that. Deselva, no but it's not only just the government, right? I mean, you take recently, there was instructions that were given by the Supreme Court to the National Police Commission. That's correct. Yes. And the, we haven't heard anything it's, it's, of it's, any action. It's been directed the to the Attorney General's for whether. advice, and we know how long that so takes. So, uh, they're, <laughs> they're expecting the advice from the uh, government, uh, Attorney General's department. But how can we speed this up? Because listening to what Dr. Ajanta is saying and what Ambika is saying, not just what, I mean, ob obviously what women have been going through for decades, but we've seen like even ordinary people go through. Because basically, you get away from the police if you have money and power. If you don't, you're no, Stop to even. some extent that is correct because so, everybody cannot go to Supreme Court yeah. and uh, ch challenge uh, their... Not everyone has the access to the lawyers, etc. Yes. So now I'm beginning to question what is the point of the lawyers and the legal profession and what is the no, point of all of it no, if, to some extent, this in, if injustice is so pervasive? You must understand that the Human Rights Commission is there to help people and they are doing a good job. And then the, uh, the other thing is if the people doesn't have, they, they don't have money, then they can go to uh, uh, our legal aid. Legal aid but is this, is this good enough? Because, I mean, you, you look at right, this was current well, Supreme Court, uh, one of the Supreme Court justices, uh, Yasanta Koda, whatever, uh, in his uh, inauguration speech, he actually said, you know, it, it takes on average about 11 to 12 years uh, for a uh, criminal case to go through the uh, system from the initial point so of view to go through the system. That, right? uh, to, uh, eight to six years because uh, but I, I, I am personally, you know, uh, I can say that's, that's that one that's of appeal. Court of Appeal, that they, we have two uh, branch, uh, two ventures hmm. uh, deciding criminal appeals. Now they are doing it very well. Now, but I mean, said, eight years if you no, take a, vic a victim years. of crime. Don't, don't say okay, like yeah. that. So that's a fact at that point. But yeah. now they have improved it, and we are going to do better service. What's, what's but the yet, uh, what's the there average are now? Some other uh, other things that have to looked after because if we are going to ignore these things. We, people will suffer definitely but we as they say that we have to take immediate action now what is the action we are going to take we are going are we going to give to the other people now uh, opposition people who are not conversed with the uh, present laws also they are not uh, bothered about the uh, amendments also they are just criticizing that but, but do you think the government is aware of this no that's what i'm telling them they, they are no, government is also not aware no, no, who's no, aware totally unaware uh, <laughs> so that's yes, sir. Right. Yeah. but how, how are we going to how are we going to uh, do the uh, the next step so are we going to change the government and give it to another people? Who are the people who are giving but that's, that's, but I, I mean, mean that's that democracy, is, right? I mean, that's Isn't it you need a public <laughs> mandate to do this? Change. Change. Sorry, Amrika. Public mandate yeah. in this way <coughs> is a futile exercise. But I will also, tell you. Mr. Because, Silva, uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yes, it's sir. also about the constitution, right? The other alternatives are actually I mean, we don't have a real alternative. So that's yes, correct. all of us are going to have a a problem when we go to the polling booths uh, to decide who we are going to vote. You, that yes. is the reality. But that doesn't uh, mean because we mm. do respect the Constitution. That's correct. And the Constitution exactly. does require us to have elections. And the right of franchise. Is that is about why I'm telling you, we, we have to change the Constitution for and what? change oh, the laws. To to well. Not to have. <laughs> to want to be elections. What's the change? To, what? to, What's the change? to change, change the election laws. Otherwise, what? now they are at the, at the moment, election laws have been changed the amendment is pending so far nobody <laughs> in the parliament is interested in bringing that you're saying an amendment on the electoral system. system that when the 19th amendment came forward mm. it completely violated Sirisena's manifesto because all Ranil wanted for reform was to give the president's power to him yeah. we made some amendments but I said what about electoral reform which That's is the correct. second yeah. pillar that was supposed to be in the 20th Amendment, but Parliament no, no, no. was prorogued, no. or dissolved rather. So they said no, they bludgeoned into dissolving it. Mm. But I introduced an amendment mm. to the 19th Amendment for electoral reform. That's correct, yeah. And 
the Secretary General didn't allow it because in those days the Secretary General said he's very different. Unfortunately, I didn't have Karuja Asuri or Mahindaya Pabe Vodana. So they absolutely refused to look at it. And a lot of my amendments were just laughed at. And there were only two people who took them seriously, Chamal Rajapaksa and Dinesh Gunawar, yes. to give him his due. The rest just were so anxious to go to bed. That's what I'm telling you. But so, I did try. Hmm. And then the 20th was promised us immediately. And Mahinda Deshapri told me, which is very simple to do, but I Rani not know what to but, but, but Mr. De Silva, at the end of the day, for, I mean, this uh, is uh, still the, at least in, in, in name, the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. So, any view need, I mean, for the, for the amendment that is stronger, at least yeah, the Yapalne government came in with that mandate to amend the constitution. Yes, yes. Maybe they fell short of it, but they did have the mandate. Does the current government have a mandate to be making these legal reforms? You don't have if, a mandate no, from the people. No, no, if they want, they can do it because they, they pass all the legislation. And how can they pass? But they don't have the two-thirds majority to the amend the constitution. If they want, that's what I'm telling you, perfectly right. If the other party is also willing to change the electoral system, they can give their consent and by two-thirds majority is simple. So that is why I'm telling you, we are talking about unnecessary thing, asking election. Yes, I think it's quite correct. And she said it should be, it's a mandate. It's a mandatory requirement that people should get their <coughs> franchise. That is correct. But to, swan, to what extent we are going to do it? So we you're are saying going to change the present government and give it to somebody so, else. So basically, either way, either way, either way, either way, that's, that's, that's democracy. democracy. Yeah. But democracy. Mr. De Silva, that you're, you are using. So you're that, saying uh, democracy doesn't but work. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're saying is democracy yeah. doesn't work. No, no, no. You are using that word and trying to give it to somebody else, and then again she will come here but, and criticize them. But Mr. <laughs> then, no, Mr. De Silva, no, I don't but if they're not if they're not doing the job, you criticize them. No, no, no. Yes, Mr. for that. Mr. Yeah, Kumar, yeah, yeah. It's not my job. Yeah, yeah. It's not my job to yeah. praise them. The no. per our purpose as citizens. Don't forget about any other hat we wear. Just as citizens, because we also, you know, we file tax returns and we do pay tax. That's Some good. people yeah. may not, but we do that. And therefore, we the purpose of criticizing is to hold them accountable yeah. because they're supposed to be public yeah. servants. Yeah. So yes, when the next government after that, of course, I will criticize, and that is my right, and I will do so with now, me. Mr. Singh, public uh, servants should not take the, it. When, see, for us now, the picture that I have in my mind is the government was connected with the way that the police behaved. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. They had orders from someone for them to withdraw at that particular point right, yes. so that the thugs could come and harass mm. us mm. we would be frightened we mm. would walk away from it and then they will try to suppress that same way every protest that's what i believe was the plan but it didn't happen mm. see now in a situation like that and if, yeah. if such a government exists right people have the right to now say we need an election in order to bring whoever we like so that we may be able to bring about a change. That's what democracy is. We have that Certainly right. Certainly it should be, but the way that is there, it's not the correct way of doing that. Because what we are going to do is, we will try to change the attire and bring the same people with another attire. So that is not correct. But do you we think it's the same people who are going to come As she, as she quite correctly pointed out, why are they not interested about electoral system change? So that is why, now, uh, what Yapal government did, he said, uh, with regard to some elections, they try to uh, implement it by at the committee stage, they put a lot of amendments, unnecessary amendments, and then they forget about it. So th that is why we don't have provincial uh, council election. Now, he here, of course, we are waiting to have, uh, oct in October, the presidential election. So till such time, we have to see what is the present government is going on. And then at the same time, we have time to change the necessary requirement to get better people into the parliament. We see who are there. They are just, sometimes they just 
uh, uh, stand up and talk nonsense. So, and Mr. Silva, how, yeah. how do you propose? How but, do you propose so, those are the people who have to vote for the electoral reforms yes, you are talking no, about. No, no, no. <laughs> that is what they are not doing it. So uh, no, no, but you. if they are, you're saying uh, that they are right now oh, yeah. standing up and talking nonsense. I, and I agree with you. We right. saw examples of that during the debate on the online oh, safety app, right? Yes. Now, you're, you, you're saying we, we need to change this the system, the electoral system, yeah. before we can chase these guys out. Uh. But then you're going to rely on these guys, the change guys the who are standing up and talking nonsense, that's to right. change the electoral no, system. No, what I'm saying is, if the parties are ready to do that, they can do it. Remember this. What you're saying is that if the MPs don't really have that power and that the party leadership can make the decisions, certainly, and the MPs, the MPs are basically they, they followers who will go along. No, no, if they get together. To point. Uh. For the last five years, I have kept saying electoral reform, electoral reform, That's electoral right. we are reform. We're talking about that. Manohara de Silva, whom I met, I didn't want to meet these people because I felt, because I realized they would do nothing. Mm -hmm. Manohara said, no, no, we are presenting our report in a, a month's time. Two years later, the report was still not there. I mean, how could Gota point Ramesh de Silva as chairman? Yeah. Ramesh said, I don't know anything about it. I mean, he was very honest. Again, Rajiv, No, no, Ramesh Sal said this. No, no, I think Salam <laughs> will remind you that the names. No, 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 but I said Manohara are, promised me he'd bring this. Because none of them are then here. I spoke exactly. to Dinesh Gunamodman, whom I'm very fond of, and he said, no, no, let's work on this. I sent him proposals. He actually got Mahinda Yapabe Wadman to see me. Then, of course, the Aragla happened and it didn't. And I have to say, this is what I mean. I have to stand up. When Dinesh became Prime Minister, he did nothing the three. He called me and said, shall we work on this? Mm. I said, I'm sorry, Mr. Dinesh, whom I love. You cannot touch pitch and not be defiled. So long as you work for this government, I will have nothing more to do with you. I wish you luck. Free yourself from this old man of the sea on your neck now. Mm -hmm. And I will help you. But until then, I will not have anything so to do that, with that's it. A but fact. My, that's but, a but fact. my point Real is, fact Dinesh, is that the Dinesh should have pursued mm. it because yeah, I yeah. sent him all the papers. So, no, it so, is so there. This is I mean, these are, are the party, there. These are, so you said the party leadership can come together, and yeah. said, but these are the party leaders. So that, no. one of the leaders, no. So there. Well, I'm main, not a leader. No, I'm not a leader. No, no. I'm trying to understand. Dinesh is the party leader and a very decent man. What you're saying is that we need to, I mean, this. correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I can try, hmm. what I'm trying to understand what you mean is, okay, we have guys in parliament who don't really understand these things, but they will vote for it. If the party leadership puts it together with the That's technocrats, happening now. <laughs> with right. the technocrats, if they put it together and put it forward, hmm. these, uh, the uh, members of parliament, the honorable members of parliament will vote for it. So therefore, what you're suggesting is that you get the party leadership maybe a APRC plus the technocrats involved to draft this legislation. Not get draft, it, it is there. It's uh, there. Yeah, well, the has part, all yeah, the well, draft of the, the 20th Amendment from 2015 is there. Uh, you can work on that. There's also multiple other research that has been done on uh, mixed member proportional systems. Et That's et correct. Yeah, that is there. So the, all of that is there. So you're saying let's put that all together before and let this parliament run its term through to 2025. That's right. The That's time is there. Then that is a legal time. Now. So the constitution says so that they can be... you basically let the president but, and the but parliament you know, Mr. run the course of their about term. This? But yeah, yeah, now they are asking election. What, what, for what purpose? But, but, but wait, hold on. Let, let me just... Let, let me thing just we are talking about... So con constitutionally, uh, uh, the president, current president, he's, he's, he's can serving out... October. He can wait till October. Okay. The parliament can go on till, I think, August next year. That's right. Right? So you're saying we should just let this term run? Not say if they're willing to have it election prior to that, they can do it. But you're yeah. saying get the electoral reforms in first. In and that's what I'm saying. Oh, no. So they I, already I, have, I am so in that already, I am in that context passed. because if they are not going to change the electoral system, you are getting the same people. Okay, I, I think I and understand. Then, then, I think unnecessarily, I understand. we are can talking I, about saying a little better can now. Can I bring but, up one issue yeah. here? People are sick and tired and asking for elections, not because of anything else, but because of the uh, because of the situation in the country. Yeah. Economically, we don't see our country going forwards. We don't see it any, in any way. Then we have also this aggressiveness and the violence is happening. Then we take this case of immunoglobulin. Now, Mr. Kehliya Rabukwella, uh, his secretary, who is Chandra Gupta, Mr. Chandragupta has already 
uh, spoken to the when he gave his statement to the CID, he has already said that uh, it was Mr. K. L. Rambukwella mm. who has given him the Instruction. advice to write that mini okay. thing. I don't think that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't that's think that's you are you case, you case, you you can't can't to yes, say that because, because doctor, you don't doctor, know the real let, facts. Let, also. let me ask you this question mm. though, because you say clearly the people are asking for elections. Mm. Any opinion poll done by almost any agency or market research agency or even political think tanks etc point in that direction the people are calling for elections now i think just to highlight what uh, jason was saying earlier uh, just a quick i mean the clarification that dr injadit kumar swami gave on that was that he didn't say that elections should be postponed he said that elections should not distract from the fiscal discipline that is needed in the government right now because elections are a time uh, have been a time of fiscal indiscipline now, we can see that fiscal indiscipline kind of creeping into the government right now as well, which mm. means that they are preparing for uh, potentially elections. So, what I want to ask is the problems that you highlighted now, will it be solved through an election? Yes. I think that's what mm. uh, yes, you are discussing. Sure. So, who, the reason who being, is the party who has given the correct way of doing the country? So, no, no, I, tell I, me. I, I tell I'd me. like to yeah, answer that yeah. question. Is this. Now, let's say the, Mr. The, 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 the Minister X, mm. whom we are talking about mm. right now, right? We know that he should be arrested. No, and the, the, I don't think I... Now okay, you are coming... Okay, okay, now, wait, wait, wait. What, now, what, wait, what a, okay, let's say... Change I'm, of I'm election. Only, I'm, the, I'm only <coughs> talking about this what? particular minister, right? Now the, now, the reason why an, uh, hierarchies are not accepting that or not going through with that <coughs> because right now in the government if that happens there will be in the present government a split because some will be agreeing with it some will be disagreeing with it mm. so once the government splits the whole purpose of this will be lost the whole, whole purpose of the parliament i mean like what the what the hierarchy wants is to have this parliament who would give him the majority votes in with every bill law, every So what is the alternative? That is what I am okay. asking you. So have you got the alternative with I you? See, no, you I don't see have. is an election. You know why? Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. let the people choose. I mean, we, to we choose, need to take... To choose a particular pa person or party, you must be educated them and then tell them that this is the policy, this is what it's going to do and this, these are the why people are who are kind of... Did we do but all that when this? there was an election that's why, before? That, that's what I'm telling you that we, we have... No, did we, we have do that, that before? We no, have that but then then you see, Mr. This is one, one of the problems we have to remember is that after we had an excellent manifesto in 2015, 15, yes. Ranil destroyed it. He just ignored <laughs> everything that poor Maitripala tried and Maitripala was so... Again, again. Yes. 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 No, no, we all know that Maitripala will tell you. I don't, have to, to tell. Defend himself, I don't so. have to tell you, Maitripala will mm. tell you. Mm. But the man was so weak until he finally, you know, kicked against the pricks. But he was not a wicked man, I think. He was a foolish man. That was a separate issue. But the real problem that we have to face, and I will ask you this, from... You know, as I said, I was one of the first to go against my, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa. I have the pride of saying I told him before I, I did so, unlike anyone else. But there were some achievements during his time in office. What have we achieved from 2015 onward? We talk about fiscal discipline. There has been no fiscal hmm. discipline. As you know, the debt got bigger and bigger from 2015 to 2020. And the interest rates we were paying increased colossally because of Arjuna Mahendra. You know, people blame Cabral, but Cabral kept interest at 10% in his time. The minute Mahendra came in, interest shot up to 12 and every single debt after that was at 12%. And we are borrowing more and more and more. Mm. But so, uh, just, and just, a, just a quick, just, no, because just, just to clarify that, because we have done the research on this, yeah. a lot of the, uh, especially borrowing that had to be done, because uh, this is the but cycle of debt, right? Debt. Was to service debt that had been taken for <laughs> pr projects. Mm. Now, the pr you had the project-based loans that were taken during the uh, during Mahindra Rajapaksa's uh, tenure, uh, primarily second term, but also some from his first yeah. term in pres as president. And yeah. then when Yapalne came in, once you had a better understanding of what the what your finances were like, you then had to get debt. 
to service that day. And add also should then, have to and then, from a lower and, middle. Yeah, and middle middle no, so they were not getting And then to, the to add to that, you got into an IMF program, which President Gotabe Rajapaksa promptly withdrew the country from in November of uh, yeah, but, 2019. Yeah, but you think, So this, what I'm saying is, it's, uh, it's, there is, there is fault on the part, there is maybe a portion of blame that on the part of all of these figures. Exactly. But it doesn't, yeah. you can't condense There's it no into one, a yeah. single term. No, no, it no, runs no. over The point years. I was trying yeah, to make is you're perfectly correct that especially in the last three years of Mahindra Rajapaksa's second term, he got more and more grandiose and there was no productivity in those loans. If you take Mattala, mm. you still writing oh, about the, Mattala. The convention centre, the airport, the harbour. Yeah, etc. Yeah. But the very simple fact is that Yahapanya came in knowing all this and they pledged to do other things. But what Indudit was also telling me the other the whole problem is that from that time to this, there has been no effort A to reduce expenditure. Hmm. It has got higher and higher and that should have happened. No effort at all to recover a lot of the stolen money. All governments haven't done anything of that sort from 2015 onwards. Although they all said, you know, there has been a lot of crookers. Ajwara Mahindran is still in Singapore. Right? Perpetual Treasury still is doing business. But Professor, forget about recovering the stolen monies because now that, that's a crime. That's yeah. a crime and, and it's, it's forbidden in law. But recently, I think the Minister of Energy, he said that... Uh, now, now, we know all the situation surrounding the CEB and how one million power connections were disconnected because they couldn't pay yeah. their electricity bills. That has just skyrocketed through the roof. And the reasons that we've been given is the fact that the CEB is making losses, we need cost-reflective pricing, and mind you, the cost also covers the salaries for employees, the benefits, okay. so on and so forth, yeah. managerial costs. And yeah, now know, we learn, and now we learn, Professor, profit. now we learn, Professor, that there has been a loan scheme mm -hmm. at the CEB where they grant loans at concessionary the interest employees. rates to their employees. employees. Guess who pays for the concessions? Two-thirds of CB the interest customers. on those loans that are being given to CEB employees that amounted to 12 billion, and this is coming from the minister himself, was paid by the consumers, was paid by us, was paid by the people whose lines got disconnected. They couldn't pay those interest rates anymore, so their lines got disconnected. No, we know all that. This is broad. As you probably know, when I was secretary to a ministry, hmm. or when I was TV, he said, just told my ministry, you're not appointing anyone to this place. Hmm. And Mahindra Swami Singh accepted it. I said, I'm not appointing anyone at state expense because I'm not the financial uh, accounting officer. No? Hmm. And Mahinda accepted this. In the end, we compromised. I said, if there are drivers, you can put your own men, provided they have the qualifications. I won't sit on interview. But no managerial staff, nothing. His successor got me sacked because I wouldn't appoint his people. So you're perfectly right. Because of this system of politics that we have, we have got massive rent seeking. I, I don't think it's to do with the politics. I think it's, we are very bad managers. Yeah. No, but Ajanta, have, I'm telling you, people, we, appoint people. If you, when I went to Oldville many years ago, all the security guards came from Gaul. <laughs> Richard Patarana was the minister of education. So I told the guard, Mukadho Gala Mehta Khan. Nasa, Gaal la vara hai, Oldville waling, the minister winne. Because, what's his name? Ashraf. Had sent all his people there. And no longer, I mean, when, Mahindra, when I told Mahindra I'm not appointing, he said any other secretary would have done it. I said, I'm not any other secretary. But the tragedy is no secretary now will stand up against their ministers, you know. No, the I point mean, you I, made I, about Kenya. Well, that's that's, it. that's but, been a reality for a, for a very long no, time. Because ever it since just, the, I think you can say that ever since... I, I still the don't CCS, agree with Mr. Silver's... The, with well, the politicization and... The, the politicization the, of, the, of, the, 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 of the public sector. The public but sector but can I tell you what happened in 2015? One pledge was to depoliticize the private sector. Uh, the yeah. public yeah. sector. And everyone was appointed by the PSC, except the permanent secretary. Yeah. So I said, why is this? And then Ranil told me, no, no, some good people can be appointed from outside. So I said, that's okay. fine, it must be an exception. Maitri Pala told me, he didn't understand. He said, no, 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 no,
हरी नपुरु के नेक महिंद्रा राज बाकले बात करा। But what right. is the guarantee? So you know the point I'm trying to say is that you need to have a professional thing, and this is where you know one of the reasons I find our political scientists so appalling right through this whole country is nobody has analysed why Jaya Jayawardena, having claimed to introduce an executive presidency, did what no other executive presidency in the whole world has, which is ministers in parliament. Yeah, uh, you know, because if you have an executive president, you must Prince. have. But I think talking outside. about what happened in uh, the past will, is not going uh, to solve the uh, problem. Let, 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 let me just bring it back to that the question that we were asking about earlier. Right now, Mr. U R D Silva thinks that uh, the problem that we need to solve with having better public representation cannot be solved through elections and a new parliament with a mandate from the people. Mm. You need to work with the technocrats and the, the guys that you have in parliament mm. now to get these reforms in before the end of this parliament's term in August of 2025. Dr. Ajanta is saying that no, we need, people are asking for elections now. You need to have an election and a fresh mandate has to be given and these problems need to be addressed and also, in the new parliament. And also, what is the guarantee that, that these people that you're talking so, about, the ones who have been there, will be re-elected? Yeah, and uh, Professor Vijay Singh, what, 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 what I want to ask you is, where do you stand? Do you think that we need, well, it's clear. The people are asking for elections. What yeah, is your stand? Do we need to I have totally elections? agree with Adanta and I think Ambika that you need an election immediately. Yes. But the only problem I have, I can understand Mr. De Silva's point. Has there been any evidence of any movement by anyone in government to move these reforms forward? That's correct. Mm. You no, see, no, if uh, Mr. De Silva but, says... But I think he's questioning again what, what you were no, saying. No, no. Yeah. Mr. De Silva's point is this government, this government can do it. But my point is, it hasn't done it. It shows no evidence of doing it. Dinesh has done nothing to promote electoral reform. You yourself and your minister have done nothing. You know, again, Vijayadasa Rajapaksa is a decent man, but he hasn't got an idea in his head. So you have to put those ideas um, into that so head. So, Mr. Rajan, I, I, I want to bring that same question to you, right? Yes, I mean, nothing. On, on the question of mandate, <laughs> because as, as, Mr. De Silva, as Mr. De Silva said, uh, in all likelihood, uh, not we just you, I mean, we'll okay. probably be back May here I, with yes. a new government okay. and doing we the same do, thing. Clearly, we need electoral reform, yeah. right? But whether this parliament is going to do it, clearly that is not uh, their priority. And also, can we trust this government to do it? Because the laws that they are passing so far are laws that restrict our rights. So can we actually trust them to bring about progressive electoral reform? The other most important thing is things don't change in society because you set up a commission or because you pass a law. We have a culture here which is rather feudal. It functions on patronage. There is nepotism. So the political parties themselves are not democratic. Look at the way they function, right? About diversity within the party, gender representation, how is power distributed? So you need to change all that. You cannot change the law and imagine people are going to behave differently. Why do certain, uh, why are certain ministries the coveted ones? Hmm. Because they want it because they know they can give jobs. Like Ports Authority, for instance, is coveted because Job. historically we have seen when a minister changes, a lot of jobs suddenly, you know, you get people appointed to that. That's and why Mangala chose Ports and Shipping instead of foreign. Well, I mean, may I finish? Did. Yes. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yes. I'm yes. Your point. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's. <laughs> It's, the best about, <laughs> it's about, I mean, uh, it's about the political culture here and we need to change that. If you don't yes. change that, people will elect the people who they think they have the best access to, right? Mm. And it, politicians are not really accessible because they don't behave like public servants, they beha behave like demigods. Like so feudal you think chieftains. Feudal chieftains. So the way to get access is to also then pander to that. So you're creating this whole culture, this feudal, uh, patronage-driven culture. That doesn't change through laws because laws, often as we have seen, don't seem to matter here, right? 
Supreme Court judgments don't seem to matter here. So how do you change that? I think it's also about civic education. It's, it's about a lot of little things, right? So the reform is required, but having election should not depend on that. Exactly. Because we do still need to respect the Constitution, we need to respect democratic processes, and democracy but, is messy. But but All of us are going the, to be dissatisfied the, at some in, point. In terms of respecting the Constitution, constitutionally, this Parliament's term we ends have time. in August we have to write time to reform this President's this term ends so why in August not, 20... Uh, why are you not August going to do this, that? Uh, sorry, October uh, this year. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so Ajanta, constitutionally, there is no requirement for yeah. ele elections right now. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Ajanta, uh, the need for elections, mm. which most people agree on, uh, it comes down to something much more fundamental, isn't it? That is uh, economic freedom. The, the the freedom to feed oneself and one's family. Exactly. And uh, just a few weeks ago, the government announced that it is increasing the number of uh, families on Aswasuma, uh, the, the <coughs> welfare uh, program, up to 2.4 million, which is a clear admission that things are going from bad to worse. Exactly. Uh, and therefore, the, the people who can't afford to feed themselves uh, clearly would like a change. Uh, what that change would be, again, is up to uh, the, the, how they vote. So what we are anyway, expecting is we question. want to teach a lesson to the present government and elect the... But I don't think it's about teaching a lesson. And that's what we are going to do. I like to answer that question. Why did the government decide to increase the number of people who would receive Aswasuma is? Every government knows when you give Samurdhi or Aswasuma, those people will vote for them. That's right. So, 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 so it basically is, it will what the again. government is trying to do now is yeah. they, are, they are using every strategy mm. in order to please people. Yes. Now, in order to get their votes. Mm. This is not the type of government that we want. We want a government where people are made independent, they are proud to have a job, they are proud to earn their own living, they are proud to have a good family. We want a, a, a total change of mindset. And this can only be done by the younger generation. The, the people who are already in the parliament, the 225, has not been able to do that. And that's why the Aragalaya came. The whole purpose of Aragale was not just to chase these Rajapakshas away, but it was basically also to change the way of governance. Now, all what we are saying is, up to now, the people who have governed the country have not been responsible. Look at the, now even the tax collection, right? I mean, inland revenue, they are collecting taxes. But yeah, they are only collecting 15% of the taxes from the I mean, 15% of the population only from whom they are collecting the taxes. So we still have four trillion to collect, and then they introduce the VAT in order to compensate for that. So what I'm saying is bad governance, and this is why people are saying they need an election. It may not it may not work out fantastic, but yet. The Constitution allows through this democracy that the people have the right to vote and elect someone else if they are not pleased with the present government. We need to give them that option. Yes, you have to give that option. Before that, you have to be prepared. Merely because you want to teach the government and trace the government now, that does not mean we will solve the problem. It will come to worse situation. But then, Mr. I will De Silva, say. Mr. De Silva, you said that no political party has come forward and put out a program. That's right. And told, you know, this is the path that we're going to take. And Professor Rajiv Vijay Singh mentioned quite correctly that there is no evidence that the current the sitting government or any of the parties involved in it have taken any meaningful steps or shown any indication that they plan to uh, adopt or implement the kind of reforms that you want, yes. which is the kind and of reforms that a lot of us and and, and also and also the current and also the current government hasn't really you know put forward a plan so and and, and told which, the people you no, know this no, is in they, which they, case they have already uh, shown they're doing them, it no they're doing it that's right they are they're doing not, it. They're not, they're not people it will not the accept people. They, uh, my doctor uh, will not accept that uh, program but the fact remains they have done something no, but which we we can might I, say can I not point out, but can this is my when i was chairing the tvc you know i set up some councils and the manufacturing people told me how can we 
scope things because this country has no industrial policy. Uh -huh. mm. so, and this country has no industrial policy because successive governments have appointed Vishad Badduddin as Minister of Industries. <laughs> oh, he is now, talking about 2015. Now, 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 but now what now. has happened, in all fairness, I think Vimal Veeravansa created some sort of policy. But the last few accounts I read about it, poor old uh, Ramesh Patirana, is talking about the car industry. All his points are about how we are going to have manufacturing cars and spare parts and all. I mean, he's in cloud cuckoo land. No? We need to create small industries. We need to provide employment in rural areas. We need to have marketing strategies for the poorer people. This is yeah. why we need and a new government. Of, and you know, Ramesh no. was one of the no, brightest no, people in the government. Yeah, yeah, Where is his industrial policy? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, so just bring it back the important to, things. Yeah, no, but just bring it back to this, this mm. question of like mm. whether we should have elections now, right? And like, you, because you, there was, there's a bit of a contradiction there, because you just <laughs> said, one, you agree that, sure, there's no indication that any of these parties are going to be. But your, con your, so your, conditional on elections being held after these reforms are held. Then you said, look, the parties are, there is discussion, but nothing has been made public yet. Earlier in the program today, we were talking about how, you know, people are not being consulted on laws. That's right. So, so you're going to bring, no, so you, no, you're no. going to rely on part, on parties to bring electoral reforms without consultation. No, no, there, there was, there was consultations and thereafter. You're talking about consultations that have happened in the past. Yes, yes, well, the same people yeah. were there um, in the country. Yeah, no, the, on electoral the, the, reforms. Electoral oh, system. Yeah. I was talking about everything else. No, yeah. the, the electoral <laughs> system <laughs> was drafted after consulting various authorities. Yeah, so yeah. that's what you know, they are. Election they, monitors, they, they, multiple they people consulted. Safety, but that, that's, that's all. Those I mean, consultations happened now eight, eight, eight years ago, right? Maybe, have, no, maybe we are talking things about proper things we should talk about. Yeah. No, because now eight years or ten years is a different matter. If, they, if there are uh, amendments to be done, you can do it. You do but it. have you heard any of the parties, opposition side, they, they talk about the electoral system. Read change. my Facebook. Yeah. I have put my presidential <laughs> manifesto on it, yeah. and I have now refined it, and every week I'm introducing, because no one will read it, that doesn't matter, <laughs> not even wonderful people like you, but read it, and you will that, see a that. whole comprehensive electoral reform system, a whole comprehensive system of reducing the power of politicians, hmm. so we continue with provincial councils, but elected through the Pradeshya Sabhas, because we don't want several layers of elected politicians. Hmm. We want devolution closer to the people. Hmm. So the Pradesha Sabha is the key now. But the provincial council should be elected collegiately. So you lay, lay out elections. But there's one thing that I think, and I don't have time to do it now, but one of the things we've all mentioned is the need for better education. Ambika <laughs> talked yeah. of civic education. You talk, talked about an elector. And one of the saddest things, we were discussing this earlier, is the complete lack of a modern educational policy. I think Since the general public should be given some education on the law as well. Yeah, that's right. no, I'm telling you. So <laughs> and now they, what they say is that they are going to introduce the uh, necessary laws to the uh, uh, curriculum of okay. the education. Can I just so ask we, did, we, 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 we did have a subject called life competencies when I was schooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite a, In school. Just a few years no, ago. And when we redid ago. the syllabus for it, <laughs> but, uh, except that Susil Premdian just destroyed everything we did, <laughs> we introduced the whole Again, concept. Uh, <laughs> no, Taradi Mel's time was excellent. We introduced the whole concept of civic responsibility of thinking skills. Mm -hmm. The book we produced, in fact, I'm very pleased, Cambridge University Press came to me and said, you know, your curriculum is so good. Can we do the book for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, because can I just the whole say, thing. Okay, but well, none of well, that is I there think, now. Okay, Saubhagya Dakma, how good was that? Worst, worst, worst. As she quite correctly pointed out, we thought they will do a good job. And what happened next? Then they, they ruined the whole system. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying from 2015, mm -hmm. there, is exa there are examples no, up I, to 2020. Why, why I asked you that question is this. Yes. Sri Lankans are very good at putting forward manifestos and ideas and promises. So without we are doing very that, good at that. Ah, yes. and but we are very good also. at not and keeping those law. promises. So what Conflict I believe is Conflict we need manifesto. to give opportunity for a new set of people to come forward 
And if we do not, at the moment, I know there are a lot of people who are very interested in politics, young people who are coming up. And if we give them the, I mean, of course, we need to help them out you know, in, in, That's in what knowledge I'm you. with people there, like you. There is time. But Help them no, 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 and bring them. But we <laughs> need to give them that right for election. By merely you know appointing him them to parliament is not going to solve problem. You educate what's them. The, what's you the help difference, them. Mrs. Silla, what's the difference between no. having people in the parliament right now who can't even read and write? That's why we are asking and they don't them to go. Even if they are given a document, they don't but read and write it. No. Uh, read, read it. So, we, what, so why don't we bring no, no, I think, I, I think, I think that's, the, I think that's the tactical I'm, side I'm, of Mr. Disilva coming into play. Use the deficiencies in the system to put forward progressive reform. Uh -huh. <laughs> whether, whether they choose to read or write is a But there matter. is a good percentage. No, reading means read. reading and understand. Understand all <laughs> 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 I think they can read the letter. So yeah. let's give a new comprehension. Is yes, yes, certainly. I am also in agreement with you. But who are the people we are going to elect? They and who come. are the. No, huh? they, they declare the elections. <laughs> they they, they will come. Come. So, I, I think, maybe you I, should I, run for office. I think, no, I think no, we could. I think we could discuss these matters, of course, for. But we need to stop now. Yes, but. One more. Yes. Yes, yes, definitely, Rish. Yes, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did on this show ask uh, all the political parties to mm. please come forward with their manifestos. Yes, yeah. uh, and uh, we uh, unfortunately <laughs> haven't received any yet, and we will yeah. continue to ask uh, because we ourselves can read and write, <laughs> and we certainly will present all well, I'll of them. I'll send you my 2019 to manifesto. But we can't people. depend on those and, manifestos. And, 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 no, I because don't you know think what I is, ask what Dr. I, Ajanta what I to bring manifesto. those young people to here and ask them to give us the opportunity exactly. to question them. Exactly. That's all. And I, I and firmly, we love, we I love firmly to have believe them. people hmm. make good manifestos. People do produce wonderful documents, just like the Saubhagi Dakma. But at the end of it, what happened? He ran away with the Saubhagi Dakma. So we don't want another situation like that. But I know for sure, you know, there are people, young people, who are ready with brilliant ideas for this country. And I, we need to encourage that. Please. And the other thing is, if people want, in a democratic country, if people want an election, Give them the election. Why fear? What is the big fear? And, and another reason that we would like uh, the parties to come forth with their manifestos is that then we would really believe that they are all coming forward for elections mm -hmm. and not, <laughs> not trying to postpone I mean, them. All, once all I yeah, really want right yeah, you're right for a party is to I don't uh, show them your draft of an omnibus bill, bill that will repeal. Who's? Give them uh, your own manifesto. All the laws. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm not. I'm not going to shoot for the stars. All I want is just a simple that, that, omnibus Nadia. bill that basically reflects that repeals all of. Them. Let's think positively and bring a change. Thank you very much uh, to our journalists and of course our panelists. But we're not done yet. We're uh, going for the closing statements. Uh, I can only allot two minutes to each of our panelists, of course, uh, due to the time constraints that we're currently experiencing. I'd like to start off with uh, Amiga Hathgurunathan, former commissioner at the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka and a member of the UN uh, Voluntary Trust Fund for Torture Victims closing statement <laughs> i think you know in response to uh, Ms. what mr u r de silva has said the reason that people are asking for elections is not because they want to take revenge because most people have their lives and they're not politically motivated it is because they find for instance you know the government is not paying enough attention to social protection because of the crisis and we know that when you implement an imf program the devastating social impacts that it could have so you do need to address them they have the asvesma program but i know that there are many shortcomings in that we've had you know reports about malnutrition increasing poverty etc so when the government is not listening to the people that's when people say enough the second thing is all these repressive laws. Now, for instance, every time someone has a protest, whether it's SJB, JVP, students, why on earth do they have to waste state resources to go get a court order and then use water cannons, etc.? Just let people protest. Why are they so petrified? and wasting resources that we do not have. That is another reason people are afraid that they're restricting civic space. They're bringing their anti-terrorism you know, law, they're bringing the online safety bill, the NGO law to restrict civic space. So people are afraid that this government is becoming increasingly authoritarian. And when you have discontent, 
people are not allowed to express themselves there is poverty so their daily life is you know appalling it's very difficult and challenging is when you also have social discontent right there will be no social cohesion and that is what leads to violence anarchy so, anarchy and or, well not anarchy but definitely violence hmm. you know at the social level so the government should at least have a sense of self preservation <laughs> but the fact that they do not and they are arrogant enough i think is also the sense of impunity where they think despite whatever they do because of the political culture that they will be reelected <coughs> very much uh Ambika Sadgurunathan, former commissioner at the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. We now move our attention uh, to Dr. Ajanta Pereira, former presidential candidate and activist, uh, for your closing statement. Yeah, I think what the people in this country are crying out for is a healthy country. A country where they are born for them to live well with their families. They want economic growth, they want good schooling for their children, they want good jobs. and they want to feel safe in this country people are not asking for a lot but today what we can see is people do not have the ability to speak out what they believe in they cannot assemble together and raise their opinions hmm. and then at the same time they go to the supermarkets or they go to the shop and find that 1 kilo of carrots is 2500 rupees you know and so people are so disheartened they do not know what the future holds and so today we have a situation in the country where people are so scared they they can't talk and they are they are, they are hungry because they can't afford to buy things and they are worried about their children because they do not know whether they'll be able to afford the schooling here or whether they need to send their children out So we do not have a nation called Sri Lanka right now. We have a country where people are living fearfully and they are they are they, every day they are talking about what will happen in the future, you know? So we need hope in this country. We need justice. The most important thing for a person when they get up in the morning is to know that they can walk down the road and and the people who are governing the country would do the right thing for them wouldn't it be wonderful to have a government with where they believe in justice correctness transparency accountability wouldn't it be fantastic to have such a country wouldn't it be fantastic to have people in the parliament who do not care about themselves but about the people isn't that the country we are longing for our hearts go out in order to have a wonderful country like that and that's what we need so my my biggest prayer for this country is you know people would begin to learn how to elect the right people how to be responsible voters you know this is so so important and at the same time you know at the <coughs> moment all this aggressiveness which i myself have experienced and now now i know what it's like it's a fearful thing so you know the president should understand this he's the president right now at least he's been the president for one and a half years i believe he needs to understand that people are crying out saying give us an election so we can they might vo vote for him they might vote for someone else but it doesn't really matter that's it. that's the way he should look at the people you know giving them what they are asking for and at the end of the day he can say i have done the right thing for my own people you know and and this is beautiful because for me personally being a presidential candidate in the past you know i can see that the people are longing for a nation where they know they can call sri lanka a proud country where they can go around the world and say you know my country is good my government is looking after me hmm. my hierarchies are correct my police are looking after me they're not beating me up <laughs> this is the world that we want to create thank you, you very much thank you very much uh, thank you, you very much uh, dr ajanta ferreira well as far as giving people uh, what they want or what they're asking for sometimes it can go south because there was a time in the recent past in sri lanka where people asked for kannanatat innaratak well we have that now <laughs> and well
<laughs> you be the judge of whether that's what we really want. But however, thank you very much, Dr. Ajanta Pera, uh, for those very emotive uh, thoughts on what Sri Lanka could be or what Sri Lanka should be. Uh, we now move our attention, of course, uh, to President's Council, uh, URT Silva, Chairman of the Bureau of Rehabilitation, advisor to the Minister of Justice and also former President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, for your closing statement. Chayat, may I say this? Now, we must know our constitution says that election will be held on a particular day mm. and the president election is going to have in October. So are we ready to go for that? Before that, we are asking election. Right now, we are not ready with the uh, present situation we are suffering and we are trying to come out with the things that had happened earlier. Mm. But at the moment, we are asking election. Who are we going to elect? So it's the same people, as I told you again and again, without changing the uh, system of voting, we will go there. Nobody is there in the list, and the so-called parties will, and then now uh, the various groups have formed parties. Now what will happen to the parliament? They, they, they will, we will have a, par a parliament where nobody has the majority. Then what will happen? Dr. Ajanta and my friend, lady friend will come and say, oh, we are going to criticize. <laughs> I don't think it is correct. It is not proper way of doing it. We have criticized two governments, 2015, as he said quite clearly, 2015 to 2019, what they have done. Then thereafter, they, before that also, they said, Yahapalne, and then as she asked the Gotabe Rajapaksa's manifesto, they produced these things, and we believe that. So we are not going to believe again without a proper uh, way of presenting it. We, firstly, I, I will say my, my personal view, we, we have to educate them and then tell them this is what our country needs. And you people, the, as she said, the uh, young people, if they are ready to come and do that, if they are ready to go and sabotage and then uh, 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 set fire to the uh, uh, government institution, they are not called the uh, correct people. If they are ready to do so, we are not going to tolerate them. So we know that some people are aggressive. Merely because they are ready to come forward, that does not mean we will give vote and elect them to the parliament. We have to understand this is a democratic country and the governed by the parliament and our our main person is the president if you are going to change the system then do it but at the moment what i say is if you are not going to change the electoral system you will not get the correct people into our parliament and thereafter you will suffer again and again elections should be there and it will be have it will have it in the correct way and uh, the proper way it should be done and if they are not going to postpone it indefinitely, people will say, criticize them, and then they will protest. The so-called protests are entertained as far as they are not violent. So what I'm saying is we can't change the direction of the wind. But if we adjust ourselves, we can go to our destination. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President's Council UR De Silva. Finally, we move our attention to Professor Rajiva Vijay Singha, former State Minister. Thanks. I think we should just focus very quickly on what is the purpose of government. It seems to me that government has two basic obligations. The first is to provide security to the people. And I think we are all universally agreed, Shirasa most of all, that this government is only providing security to itself. And there is a lot of assaults on people. Ajanta gave us some graphic descriptions of what's going on. Ambika mentioned, and I think she's perfectly right, the way women in distress suffer. And they're now ignored, you know, unlike the days when Eric Illaparachi or Dara Vijayatilaka were secretaries of ministries, and they did a good job in those days. Women now, you know, when she said she went to the Women's Bureau and was chased out. So there's no security provided. Government is only concerned with its own security. But the second most important issue that a government must do is it requires to empower its people. And you empower your people first by giving them the freedom to live their lives, speak, work, etc. That's not there anymore. 
instead of empowering people and opening the world out, we are restricting people more and more. Poverty is spreading. Um, jobs are getting scarcer. The education system is getting more and more restrictive. You know, I had one of my former students, well, not one, several are the going. One of them who's doing very well said to me, you know, now he's doing so well, a lot of his money goes on tax, one third. But he said, I don't mind paying taxes, but what do I get for it? My children don't get any education. There's no proper health service. Now, when you pay high taxes, you have a right to expect at least basic education. Instead, we have more and more restrictions on education. English medium, which we started 25 years ago, is now getting more and more difficult. People have to go for tuition. So instead of people being empowered, they are being impoverished. Impoverished intellectually, impoverished physically, <coughs> impoverished in terms of, you know, the right to live their own lives. So I think in such a context, the government really has to bite the bullet and realize, you know, Mr. De Silva said constitutionally, election is mandated in 2025. But because we have a silly system, unlike in America where presidential system is fixed terms, Judge Ahudna said you can have elections when you like. So we can have a presidential election now. It's not unconstitutional. Yeah. We can have a parliamentary election now. And given what the people feel, and given that the government is not governing, <coughs> no security except security for the government, no empowerment, no improvement of the lives of people, restricted education, a health service that is unbearably corrupt and collapsing all the time, it is time to go. They must make that choice. They won't. They will hang on until they think they can bribe enough people to win. But I think people need a change. And I think there's absolutely no doubt that whatever comes will be better than what we have. It may not be ideal, but it will certainly be better than this utterly restrictive regime that is piling up corruption upon corruption at all levels. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rajiv Vijay Singh, former State Minister. Once again, a uh, big thank you to all members of uh, the panel for joining us today and, of course, educating our viewers on these pressing matters of state. Uh, and given that this is an election year, of course, there will come a time uh, when you must cast your vote and uh, I believe our hope and prayer for on behalf of everyone present here today is that you, uh, our viewers and the citizens of this beautiful country make an informed choice. Thank you very much to our journalist Nadim Majid and of course Niresh Eliathambi for asking all the right questions uh, and thank you to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode of Face the Nation. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.